Hello and welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm going through the latest and greatest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So what do I have for you today my friends? Well we have quite a bit to get through from Nvidia, so we're going to kick things off with the RTX 2080 Ti. Now of course, while the release was delayed, many reviewers and so on managed to already get their hands on it and have released benchmarks. Sadly, we were not among them, we're still waiting for our card to actually arrive. But now, of course, we have reviews out in the wild, performance benchmarks out in the wild, and that's what I'm here to discuss, as we have the professional overclocker Kingpin, who has broken the 3D Mark Hall of Fame record with an LN2 overclocked RTX 2080 Ti. Now, I just want to say before I go into his actual results, that he did achieve this with liquid nitrogen cooling. But this was a reference RTX 2080 Ti, so I already said, of course, that he did overclock this, and it was pushed to 2415 MHz on the GPU and up to 8633 MHz on the clock speed of the GDDR6 memory. Now, naturally, he did also did some tweaking to the voltage limits as well, and he did the usual suite of 3D Mark benchmarks, you know, Time Spy, Fire Strike, and so on. In terms of what else made up the machine, we see an X299 EVGA motherboard and a i9-7980XE clocked at 5.5 GHz on all 18 cores. And of course we see 32 GB of DDR4 memory clocked at 38 MHz and this is a G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 memory. But with all that said, let's actually get into the results which as I said are rather impressive. So we're going to kick things off with Time Spy Extreme and this managed to get a score of 9275 and that's often total points and 8822 graphics points. In the standard Time Spy presets, so not Time Spy Extreme, just Time Spy, it managed 18892, so 18,892 points, and an 18631 graphics score. In terms of Fire Strike, with Fire Strike Ultra, it managed 112083, so 11,283 points, and 10,909 in terms of graphics score. With Fire Strike Extreme, it got 21,637 points and 21,906 for the graphics score, with a standard Fire Strike run scoring 38,846 and 44,478 for the actual graphics card itself. As I said, Kingpin has managed to get to the top of 3D Mark's World of Fame records. Now, Again, his setup here is far from what your average user is going to have. I don't think many people have liquid nitrogen just sitting around the house. I don't know about you, but I don't exactly have that kicking around in my garden shed. But it is still rather impressive to see what the RTX 2080 type can be pushed to, at least in synthetic results, with this very monstrous setup that King Mihin had going on here. So, we're going to move on to our second NVIDIA item of all of that said, and it's actually to do with NVIDIA stock being downgraded. And no, I didn't misspeak, I said downgrade, not upgrade. And this was by the analyst known as Morgan Stanley, or the analyst firm, I suppose I should say. So, you might be scratching your head going, boah? And to be honest, that's the reaction I have going into this as well, because, well, they have again downgraded NVIDIA's stock and have reached a quote-unquote disappointed conclusion and you kind of have to wonder what they were doing, what they were thinking. Obviously they're, they're analysts, I'm not. I'm a tech journalist, that's it. But that's kind of why I'm baffled to be honest. Like, okay, so you've got the RTX 2080 tie, right? And the RTX 2080, obviously, can't forget that. And they're showing a 30 to 40% increase versus the previous generation, which is pretty in line with what we have seen previously from NVIDIA, ignoring Pascal, you know. We've seen this kind of jump in the past, but that's not even the most important thing about Turing, though. The fact is, NVIDIA are kind of making a bet here that, you know, RTX ray tracing and DLSS and all of that is going to be the next technology. Now I don't talk too much about this because Paul is actually going to be doing a video on this very same subject, but you kind of have to take the product as a whole. Yes, the performance is important, that is obviously going to be what most people are going to be using for, just a usual gaming setup, especially if the game doesn't support ray tracing or hasn't added it yet or whatever, that is obviously very very important to remember but even if you ignore all these extra bells and whistles and features and all of that that nvidia of course have been very keen to harp on with their reveals and so on 
you're still looking at some monstrous performance from the touring graphics cards. You know, we are seeing it smash current games easily. And NVIDIA basically have the run of the place in terms of competition. Like, no disrespect to AMD. They have done very, very well for themselves when it comes to Ryzen and everything there. And obviously, we don't know what they're doing with Navi and all of this other stuff. We don't know if they've got any surprises up their sleeve, all of that. But there's not anything to answer the RTX 2080 or the RTX 2080 tie. Well, to be honest with you, there's still not an answer to the 1080 tie. So NVIDIA have the run of the place. They literally have no competition when it comes to the very tip top of the high end. So even if you were just take the performance, why were they downgraded? I don't actually understand. Because then you've got ray tracing DLSS and all of that on top of what I just said. Now obviously they're looking at the market as a whole, they're taking lots of into consideration, this is obviously what they do. But they have kind of done this in the past with AMD where they have downgraded them and said that they were overpriced at $6. And then obviously they they said that they weren't going to be you know being transformative you know, that Epic wasn't actually going to have any real impact on the market and blah de blah de blah and obviously history has proven them to be incorrect now obviously as with any analyst you're going to be wrong some of the time that's fair enough but to be so wrong and then to say this on basically on the heels of that I'm just kind of like are you okay or like, I'm a bit concerned. Obviously, I could be completely and utterly wrong. Maybe they're completely and utterly right. Maybe there's some, like, secret analyst thing that I'm missing because, again, I'm not an analyst. But it seems a little bizarre to me, in all honesty. Because, okay, here's, here's the thing as well. This is not just, like, the Turing's have been downgraded. This is NVIDIA as a company. So say, for example, that you don't want to go for the 2080 tile or 2080 because it's very expensive. And to be fair, it is. I will not blame anyone at all to be like, do you know what? No. Like, it looks very impressive, but just, just no, I can't afford to give up a kidney to get this graphics card. I'd be like, fair enough. I understand. And so you decide, you know what? Now that the 1080s and the 1080 ties are going to be coming down in price, I'm going to get one of those instead. It's like a video there going, oh no, I don't want that money. I want the other money. They don't care. They still do not have any competition in that space, as I've already said. So, mm bit puzzled but hey ho and to kind of tie into this actually moving swiftly on from this particular topic is we actually have an interview conducted by WCCF Tech with the developers of Mech Warrior 5 of course there's going to be a link in the description below this video and the whole interview is is huge I'm also not going to go through it all here I just kind of want to focus on one segment in particular because they did ask them about DLSS so Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries is going to be adopting both ray tracing and DLSS as of course they've got RT calls and tentacles and so on and so forth in the actual cards themselves and basically WC asked them you know oh, do you think we're going to be seeing multiple games support both as we have seen with your game because they are very much designed to work together in tandem as we've kind of seen Nvidia say themselves at their conference at Gamescom. So what did they actually have to say? They said, quote, you could say they're meant to work together in the sense that the hardware is specifically built to accommodate the two systems. But one doesn't really require the other. Image quality as a whole will benefit from DLSS and the ray trace features would benefit by extension. So we'll get the greatest benefit from doing both, but it isn't necessarily a requirement. I can't speak specifically towards DLSS at the moment, but in terms of ray tracing feature support, at this point I think it's hard to say for now what kind of coverage we'll see going forward in games as a whole, or in terms of average support levels for ray tracing features. We're still in the early days here, even though this tech has been on the path to maturity for some time now. I think the idea of what constitutes an optimal solution can be really specific to each developer and the game they're making. So, some interesting comments to say the least. I would very much agree that they are very much designed to work together, but you don't necessarily have to have both if you don't want to. But I think we are going to see both working in tandem, especially in the high-end games. You know, your Cyberpunk 2077s and so forth. That that kind of game we're probably going to be seeing it come into play, and of course Mechoria 5 as well. Now, of course, we're going to have to wait and see what actually happens with the, the future, how much support we're going to be seeing for ray tracing, how much performance we're actually going to be getting. Of course, that is still a concern. You know, how are we actually going to be seeing ray tracing impact in real-world performance and so on? We haven't really seen a whole lot of that because, obviously, while we did see Shadow of the Tomb Raider showing off a lot and, of course, Metro Exodus showing off a lot at Gamescom, 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider doesn't have ray tracing support yet as far as I know and of course Metro Exodus is not out yet so I'm going to have to wait and see on that one but I'm definitely going to be keeping a close eye on not only DLSS but of course ray tracing and how they work together and how they perform together in a real world scenario. So we're going to finish things up with our final topic for today which is actually regarding AMD. So what we have here to finish things up is the guys over at computerbase.de spotting some things over on the USB implementers forum and we have seen several new chipsets from AMD posted here. So we see the X499 officially mentioned, but that's not the only thing we see here. Well, the first thing we see is the Z490, which as you may recall was actually scheduled to be as part of Computex 2018, and well, they pulled it and we never saw the light of it again. But apparently they've still been cracking away at it and we may have seen it come back into the fold. Again, the same applies for the X499. It was apparently ready for Computex 2018, and of course was probably going to be announced in tandem with Threadripper 2. So we could be seeing both of these boards being officially announced at CES 2019, and that would be a reasonable expectation. And you might say, okay, so why did they pull these? Well, apparently they had some concerns that were too expensive and they didn't actually bring enough to the table to make that extra cost actually worth it. So you might have to wonder, okay, is the extra time sort of under the you know, on top of the flame or in the oven, I suppose you could say, actually helped. Have they added some more? Have they managed to bring the cost down somehow or some perhaps replacing components? Obviously, we'll have to wait and see because we literally just see the listing. But it's a strong indication that at least AMD are thinking about bringing these into the public eye after, of course, deciding, oh, actually, no, 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 they're not ready shortly before Computex. So that's me done for this video. As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything discussed today. Love to hear your thoughts, guys, as always. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.